the notion of a graph being connected. A graph is connected if for all distinct vertices, x and y, there is a path from x to y in the graph. So vacuously, a graph on one vertex is connected. But when there are two or more vertices, a graph is connected when for each pair of vertices, distinct pair, there is a path from the first one to the second one. And you look at this picture, and the vertex set, the integers 1 through 12, and now you can test that for each pair, there is a path from the first to the second. Is that clear? Now think back to the opening day of this course when I was planting some seeds about problems that we would work in general. How can one specify the information about a graph when the graph is large? You're not going to draw a picture. You're going to reveal the data in some systematic way, in particular in a way that a computer could understand. So how might you do that? Think back to that first lecture. You might reveal the data in a data file in which you would say something like this. On line number one, 867, that alerts the computer, the reader, that we're talking about a graph that has 867 vertices. And those vertices are the integers 1 through 867. Now, I've already commented that in real applications, graphs have vertices which are much more complicated. They are cities. They are databases. They are libraries. They are much more complicated. So how can I talk about a graph whose vertex set is integers 1 through 867? And the answer is I have an auxiliary file over here which has a mapping. And it says vertex 23 is actually Washington, D.C. And so now inside this program, I know that this simple information is actually holding much more complicated information in stow. All right, so the first line of the graph is an integer which tells me the number of vertices. And then on succeeding lines, I just have pairs of integers. 352, 96, 451, 283, etc. Bop, 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 bop. So the computer is able to read lines and read spaces. So when it sees that second line, it says there is an edge in my graph, which consists of the two element set, 252, 96. You know, those two vertices are neighbors. They are adjacent in the graph. So I can specify this graph simply by providing a file with all this information in it. If I were to hand you such a file with first line 867, and to ask you such questions as, is this graph connected? Does this graph have a path of size 462? Does it have a Hamiltonian path? Those might be difficult questions. There are many other ways for providing the information about a graph. One of them is to provide something like this. 867 is the first thing that tells you the number of vertices. But then I might do something like this. 1, colon, 23, comma, 48, comma, 67, comma, 92, 15, comma. Now I can even do... 
a carriage return, 28, comma, 49, 103, 267. And when I'm tired of this, maybe I'll add a, a pound sign or something. Now I go to colon, and I list more, followed by a slash, and three colon, list some more, followed by a backslash. Something. So what I'm doing is I'm telling you the neighbors of the vertices in order. So the neighbors of 1 are 23, 48, 67, 92, 15, 28, 49, 103, 267. In other words, I'm, I'm saving a line at the expense of a comma. And so my, my file will be more compact because I can get, oh, I don't know, 30 or 40 items of information on each line rather than just two. But I need to, to some punctuation to tell the computer when I'm ready to move on to a, to a new list, especially if I'm doing carriage returns. So I need some punctuation and something to signal that I've reached the end of, of a list. Now, those of you that are programmers know that if you're given data like this, the convenient way for you to store that is, is linked lists. So you build for each vertex a linked list which has its neighbors, and now you are ready to manipulate that data structure to carry out various algorithms. Also, there are reasons why you would like to see this information revealed to you in the form of an array or a matrix. That's called an adjacency matrix. Question. Sorry? Like mapping 1 to 23 and 48 have set. There are lots and lots of ways. So you can do it with, with hashes, with, with maps, with arrays. Lots of ways that this data can be transformed. In every case, if I give it to you in one form, there's a trivial program that will convert it into your favorite. So the, the, the way that it's specified, in some sense, it doesn't matter. But well, I guess what I'm, the, the point that I'm really trying to make here is that you should not imagine that you're going to be given a, a graph on 867 vertices via a drawing. You have, that you have no chance of working with. The drawing is a useful device for understanding and, and being motivated by concepts, but it, it is not the way that one communicates with a machine or, for that matter, with a, with a human. Okay? Graphs which are not connected are disconnected. When a graph is disconnected, it has components. The components are subgraphs that are connected, and yet you can't add anything to them and keep them connected. Any graph which is strictly bigger, any subgraph which is strictly bigger, is disconnected. Now, this is supposed to show you the evils of drawings. So there's only what, uh, I don't know, 23 or 24 vertices in there. And, and this is, once again, one of these tests. Every time I make up one like this, of this size, I, I leave off a label, or I use the same label more than once. So I stare at this for a while to see if I've done that. I, I hope I haven't, but I usually do. All right. But is this graph connected, yes or no? You're supposed to say no. How many components does it have? Somebody said two. Somebody says three. So I see somebody showing four. If I give you that data set with 867 vertices, are you going to have a hard time telling whether or not the graph is connected? And if it's, 
if it's disconnected, are you going to have a hard time specifying the components? 